Are you stuck alone at home without a practice partner? Today at pingskills.com, we're going to show you a few ideas of how to practice alone. Some simple ideas to start off with is just developing some better control of the ball. You can start by doing some bouncing on one side of the bat. If that gets too easy, you can start to flip it over, doing pancakes. So one on the forehand side, one on the backhand side. If that gets too easy, then you can really start to ramp up the challenge. You can go one on here, one on the edge, one on here, one on the edge. And then the world's your oyster. Start to think about different types of skills that you can do that are really going to challenge you. You might want to try bouncing it under your leg. Or you could try under the other leg. Or alternating. One under that leg, one under that leg. Or you could try spinning the ball one way, the other way. How about tapping it up and catching it? See if you can catch it as quietly as possible. And then hit it up higher and catch. Or my old favourite, rolling it from one side to the other. You could try hitting the ball up against the wall and letting it bounce on the floor and then tapping it up again. You can use one side or you can alternate and use your forehand and your backhand. What about rolling the ball on a table and tapping it against the wall. Alternating forehand and backhand and starting to move around, use both sides. You can start to speed it up a bit. You can see we've just used an old trestle table here. Next, we're gonna bounce the ball up on the wall and bounce it on the table. Just developing your control of the ball. You see I've got the table turned sideways because I'm working on just touching the ball and controlling the ball well first. Now with the table lengthways I've got a little bit more room to play and I'm going to start to think about playing my topspin strokes. I'm going to focus on my technique thinking about starting beside me, going up towards my eyebrow. So I'm practicing my forehand counter hit stroke. I can do the same with the backhand. Let's now think about generating some spin with a view to improving our serves. Just using a piece of floor, I'm going to see if I can make the ball stop and come back towards me. Then I'm going to get the ball to curve. If you're lucky enough to have a few balls, you can see how you go getting the ball through between the cones. Or you might want to go and try and get it around the other way. That one didn't work. Yes! If you're lucky enough to have a table, you can also practice your serves on the table. You can start by doing the serving on the floor so that you're understanding and generating the spin and then move to the table and see if you can start to implement some of the spin you learnt by hitting it on the floor. Now, here's one other really simple idea, and that is shadow play. Shadow play is where you're playing your strokes without a ball. So really, you don't need a table tennis ball, you can have your table tennis bat, or even if you don't have a table tennis bat at home, you can practice doing the strokes correctly, thinking about your technique. 
Have a look at the training videos on pingsteels.com for all of your strokes, follow the instructions and see if you can get the same action that we show you in those tutorials. One of the other keys to shadow play is to really imagine that you're hitting the ball while you're doing the strokes. So imagine that ball coming towards you, striking the ball, your partner hitting it back, and then striking another one. You could even use your eyes to follow the imaginary ball. You can even do some footwork drills with shadow play. Thinking about forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand, pivoting, moving across, and playing different strokes while you're moving as well. If you have a table and you want to do a bit of hitting, you can put your table up against the wall and practice your strokes. You can adjust the distance away from the wall depending on what you're doing. Now, all of those things work really well if you haven't got a training partner. But another great idea, and what would be even better, is if you can find someone to feed you multi-ball. Now, you don't need anyone that's very good. I've just got Jeff, um, and he's gonna feed me some multi-ball. Now, the skill of multi-ball will take a little bit of getting used to, but not much. You can get your partner, your mum, your dad, one of your kids to learn how to feed multi-ball and it'll be a much more effective way of training. There's a whole section on pingskills.com on how to feed multi-ball.